it's safe to say that enduro bikes are rapidly becoming the shred sled of choice for a host of riders around the globe. Not only are they insanely capable on descents, arguably better than outright downhill bikes of a decade or so ago, but they can also be pedalled all day with minimal fuss. They aren't going to win any uphill sprints, but if you want a bike that's prepared for anything, an enduro bike is a solid choice if N plus 1 doesn't appear in your dictionary. And of course, if you want to turn your hand to racing, the enduro boom is a great place to cut your racing teeth. With all that said, here's 5 enduro bikes we think you have to check out for 2023. Yeti's history is racing. For many people, Yeti is racing. Even Yeti's brief marketing intro for the new SB160 references the word race three times in as many sentences. John Tomac, Missy Giovi, Aaron Gwynn and more have their names etched in Yeti's storied history and in more recent years, Richie Rood and Bex Barona have taken that pedigree to the enduro circuit. The SB160 takes this racing ethos to the next level for 2023. Built on the rampant success of its SB150 predecessor, the SB160 is honed for pure race speed. It retains the brand's unique signature Switch Infinity suspension system, with revised kinematics giving 160mm of travel and improved sensitivity over smaller bumps. The sliding unit itself has been re-engineered to eliminate the possibility of unwanted play or misalignment, resulting in a stiffer chassis and improved bearing life. The frame itself also has revised geometry and size-specific carbon layup, so regardless of frame size, the stiffness and flex profiles stay the same. Praise the heavens, the SB160 also moves to a good old threaded bottom bracket and a SRAM UDH derailleur hanger, massively improving ease of surfacing and ensuring compatibility with the new T-Type drivetrains from SRAM, or pretty much any drivetrain on the market for that matter. Casting our eye over the SB160's geometry chart also shows a much heralded move to size-specific chainstay lengths to go with the increase in reach and slightly shorter seat tube lengths. Like the rear suspension, fork travel jumps up by 10mm, this time up to 170mm while the head angle sits at a slack 64 degrees. The 77.5 degree seat tube angle should make winching up those transfers between stages that little bit easier too. All that racing pedigree doesn't come cheap though. In the USA, the base C1 build starts at $6,700, which gets you their lower grade C frame, Fox Performance suspension, a Shimano SLX and XT drivetrain, and alloy DT Swiss wheels. If you want the range topping Turk frame, you'll need to stump up $5,000 for the frame only or pluck for one of the three T level builds. These start from $9,100 for the T1 Turk and rise to $13,000 for the top T4 build with optional carbon wheel upgrade. In the UK, we're only treated to the C2 and T1 bikes, selling for £7,299 and £8,999 respectively. One for the dentists and mega rich of the world? Maybe, but if you want thoroughbred, race proven pedigree, you'll be hard pressed to find anything better than the SB160. Score might be a new brand to the MTB scene, but they're already making ways with their stunning range of bikes. While the name might be new, it's actually a gravity fueled spin off of BMC so the team there definitely knows more than a thing or two when it comes to making a good bike. Score claims the 4060 LT is designed to be all about fun, not lap times, but that doesn't mean it isn't a capable enduro machine. The signing of all-round style master Josh Lewis further emphasises this fun-loving mantra. The stunning carbon frame chucks out 160mm of suspension travel, with a lower link driving the rear shock. While it comes with an air shock as standard, there's space in a seat tube tunnel to accept a coil shock, if you're that way inclined. The full carbon construction has allowed SCORE to create the complex shapes needed to pull off the suspension design, while adding a few extra features in the process. These include guided internal cable routing for easier servicing and a clean look, as well as a stash box under the down tube with just enough room for a multi-tool or a small inner tube and the included spare derailleur hanger. If you want to, 
you can also swap your 4060LT to the 140mm ST version by changing the fork and shock, with a flip chip to optimise the geometry for each travel setup. In LT guys, the 4060 has some pretty progressive geometry numbers, with a slack 63.8 degree head angle and a steep 77.9 degree effective seat tube angle. In keeping with the fun overspeed mantra, reach and chainstay measurements are shorter than you might expect. All sizes get nippy 432mm chainstays, while reach on a size medium is 459mm. The 4060LT is available in NX or GX builds, which sell for $4,899 and $7,199 respectively. A bare frame set with Fox X2 Shock will set you back $3,799. Or if you want to add some Swedish flair to your sweet Swiss stallion, a limited frame set is available with Olin's Fork and Shock for $4,999. If fun over race run is your game, the 4060LT could be right up your street. Be sure to check out our full review of the 4060LT GX build over at bikeradar.com with the link in the description. Merida are probably better known for their road and XC bikes, but that doesn't mean they don't know how to make a hardcore enduro bike. The refreshed 160 is perfect proof. Far from being the conservative, the 160 is perhaps the most radical MTB Merida has ever produced, with a fresh suspension layout and geometry that screams progressivity. The three smallest sizes come set up mullet style as standard, while the others are full 29er. It has a 162mm out back in the full 29 setup, or a longer 171mm of travel with that smaller 27.5 inch back wheel. The frame is available in either carbon or aluminium variants, with each sporting the same geometry and suspension layout. Unusually for a longer travel bike, it uses a flex stay rear suspension system, something normally reserved for short travel cross country and down country bikes. Flex is built into the symmetrical rear triangle, replacing the pivot usually found on the chain stays or seat stays. Merida claims this is more reliable and needs less maintenance than a pivot based system. Moving on to the 160's geometry, and it's easy to see why it's being labelled as the rowdiest bike Merida has made. The 64 degree head angle may be par for the course, but the seat angle is seriously steep at 79 degrees, giving it an aggressive stance when hammering the pedals. This is teamed with reach numbers that range from 415mm on the extra short size through to a whopping 525mm on the extra long. Not only that, but four of the models in the range come with Merida's clever Team TR dropper post. It's adjustable from 30 to 230 mm of drop via a hex bolt and cable adjustment system, so you can maximise the amount of drop for any given frame size. The 160 range kicks off at a very reasonable £2,750 for the base alloy frame 500 model, while carbon versions start at £4,600 for the 160 6000 and rise to £9,000 for the all singing, all dancing 10k version. You can check out our first ride video of the 168000 with the link in the description. The rain has long been Giant's long travel weapon of choice, right back to when it was introduced nearly two decades ago in 2005. Now in its 8th generation, the new rain stays true to the original as an all-rounder with an eye on heavy hitting terrain. For 2023, the rain platform is split across five models, with two carbon framed advanced options, two aluminium framed versions and a standalone mixed wheel rain SX with a coil shock, 190mm dual crown fork and 165mm of travel out back. For all round use, the standard rain will be the weapon of choice with 29 inch wheels all round and a 170mm fork teamed with 160mm of rear wheel travel. All four reins come with adjustable geometry thanks to a flip chip in the rocker link. Giant says this offers three positions, dropping the bottom bracket height by up to 30mm, slackening the head angle by 0.7 of a degree and the seat tube by the same number. In the slacker setting, the rein has some of the most progressive numbers around, with 35mm of bottom bracket drop a 63.5 degree head angle and a 78.3 degree seat angle. The reach is a middle of the road 456mm for a size medium in the slackest setting. 
The middle geometry position is also for use with a 27.5 inch back wheel, should you want to go for a business up front and party out back mullet setup. Like some of its rivals, the rain features integrated downtube storage on both aluminium and carbon frames. It also gets updated cable ports which are said to aid performance and ease of maintenance. Pricing on the rain seems competitive, with the base rain 2 starting at £3,499 or $3,600 and the range topping rain advanced pro 1 coming in at £6,599 or $6,800. Stay tuned for a full review coming to BiteRadar.com soon. If there was a prize for the best looking enduro bike on the market, Bold's new Unplugged would be right up there. Bold made its name with their unique hidden shock frame designs and for 2023, the Unplugged gets an all new frame with the shock moving to a horizontal position. Bold claims this makes the centre of gravity even lower than the previous model. Hiding the shock inside the frame is also said to improve frame stiffness, allow for longer travel dropper posts, and protect the Fox Float X nude shock from water and dirt. By protecting the shock from the elements, it should improve performance while also extending service intervals. The shock is accessed through the removable down tube protector, which also houses Bold's Save the Day kit. This features a mini pump, tyre levers and a spare inner tube in a neat bag. Now that Bold is owned by Scott, it's no surprise to see its track lock technology. With the hidden shock restricting access to damping adjustments on the go, track lock allows you to make changes on the fly. The technology is similar to the twin lock system found on Scott's Genius and Spark, with open, traction and full lockout positions controlled by the handlebar mounted lever. Also like the Scots, the Unplugged has rotating headset cups that steepen the stock 64.5 degree head angle by 1 degree. In what could be a sign of things to come, the Unplugged is only suitable for wireless drivetrains. Despite headset rooted brake hoses, dropper post and track lock cables, there is no provision for any gear cables. Is this the start of the death knell for cable operated drivetrains? Let us know what you think in the comments. The Unplugged is available in two build options as well as a frame-only option. Prices start at £8,999 for the Unplugged Pro and rise to £10,999 for the Ultimate Build. The frame set includes a Syncross Hickson one-piece bar and stem and Duncan dropper post for £5,999. We have the Unplugged Ultimate currently on test, so stay tuned for a full review soon. An eclectic mix of Enduro shredders to wet your whistle there, but did we miss anything out? Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the next one.